Okay, this is the second lecture on steel making and it is the module 6 lecture number 27 and I will talk about the properties of slags because uh, steel making is nothing but in slag metal reaction as you will see. So, the uh, we need to understand the slag structure and the properties and uh, so we will first in this lecture we will discuss about the structure of the slag and concept of basicity and then oxidation property of the slag and viscosity of the slag. So, these are the properties important properties of the slag. So, let us first see because the silica is one of the major constituents of the steel making slag basically silica then lime and FeO. this is the very major constituents of the steel making slag and among that silica is one of them because silica percentage may be around 40 to 50 percent into the steel making slag. And if we want to see the silica and that is why the structure of silica and the basic slag that we will discuss. Now, silica has a very large network, a polymeric network of silica tetrahedron because in silica structure is like this one silicon is basically if I see if you have a silicon here and it is covalent, uh, co uh, it is bonded with four oxygen by covalent bond. These are the oxygen, okay. This is the oxygen, uh, and this is the silicon at the center, and they are connected basically a tetrahedron, it forms a tetrahedron, okay, by covalent bonding, silicon covalent bonding tetrahedron, and uh, you can see. So, this is the thing basically silica tetrahedron, if you see this like this, silicon is sitting just at the center of the tetrahedron and in the four corners you have four oxygen. So, it is a two dimensional view of the silica tetrahedron. Okay. You can see the four atom, there is a top atom and the three atoms and inside there is a oxygen atom you can see inside there is a silicon at the center of the tetrahedron. And if you see the solid structure, this tetrahedron form a huge network, a very polymeric network like this complete network. As a result, the, the, this is the solid silica. And if you just liquid, if you make the liquid silica also, in the liquid silica some of the bonds may be broken, few bonds may be broken, but it is also a huge network of tetrahedron. Okay. As a result, usually the silica melt is very viscous and its liquid is also very high, very high temperature is required. So, 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 so the liquid structure is like this, it is also a, and if you do, if you add the that is what is that called that is if you add the basic uh, oxide into this structure this is the, if you add some amount of the lime it basically depolymer, depolymer, polymerize some of the bonds. How do they do that? Basically this oxygen suppose you have two silicon is there depolymerization take place like you have suppose silicon one silicon is connected with that is the three oxygen and one is there oxygen is here another silicon is here right. So, if you add one Ca2 plus what will happen if you supply just one Ca2 plus that is the CaO basically you can add you can add some sorry, sorry one CO here what will happen CO basically it uh, decompose into Ca2 plus plus O2 minus if you add that then it may happen that is these three silica bonds are there this is the your silicon this is one minus and then O Ca2 plus. So, that way it can break the bond. So, you can find that is you are supplying one oxygen it is coming here and they are basically this oxygen get debonded. So, they become O minus and here also O minus is there one extra electron is here and they form a bond actually with them. Okay. And uh, Ca2 plus will be there this O minus O minus and Ca2 plus this will the overall neutralization will be maintained here and you can break the bond. So, lime when you put the lime, lime helps in breaking the bonds between two silicon atom. Okay. So, basically they depolymerize the structure and if you depolymerize it then your viscosity will be reduced to some extent right. And uh, so, that is you can see here 
Right. This is the way the depolymerization is taken. You can find a very nice picture of depolymerization. You can see this is the calcium atom. This is the two oxygen atom is O minus O minus and Ca2 plus. So, similarly you can see here is the calcium atom and is the calcium. Where is the calcium? They basically depolymerize the structure and they basically this lime when it goes into it, it depolymerizes in its viscosity decreases and the liquid has also decreases. Okay. So, that is the way uh, the basic slag become more fluid. So, silica slag is very viscous. If you add the basic slag, like the lime if you add it, it becomes very fluid slag because of depolymerization. Okay. So, you understand the basic structure. Now, you can see at uh, different proportion of lime, this is the basic oxide. I am write, writing the MO, MO means the basic oxide. But among the basic oxide, basically CO is more effective for depolymerization. CA, CAO or the CAF2, okay, those are the very cations. Calcium cation is more effective in depolymerization. Anyway, I am writing it in generally that is the MO, that is the basic oxide. It can be calcium, it can be magnesium also, quite good. Magnesium also depolymerizes the structure significantly, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide like this. So, that is why generally I am writing is MO. MO. And MO to SiO2 ratio is changing, you can find. Then how much depolymerization you can do, carry out. First of all, I have given you total oxygen to silicon atom ratio. That is the when it is 2 is to 1, oxygen is 2, silicon is 1, then obviously corresponding molecular formula is the SiO2. Now, if I make it 5 is to 1, that is the 5 atom of oxygen connected to the 2 atom of silicon. In that case, the structure is removed into 2 SiO2, that is the pot 2 mole of SiO2, I am giving 1 mole of basic oxide and in that case only one link will be broken because out of 4 link of silicon, silicon is connected with the 4 oxygen. So, if I give for 2 SiO2, 2 moles of SiO2, if we give 1 mole of basic oxide, then only one, one of the bond will be broken, right. One of the bond will be broken and you can have this type of anionic complex Si6, O15, 6 minus Si8, O20, 8 minus this type. Only one bond will be broken and they will be in the, usually they prefer to live in a circular form like this. So, all these things circular anionic complex. It is the very complex anionic complex like Si6, O15, 6 minus is this, right. One, only one link is broken. If you increase the basic oxide, that is when the SiO2 to MO ratio is 1 is to 1 or if you say total oxygen to silicon ratio is 5 is 3 is to 1, that is I am basically increasing the basic oxide. In that case, two links will be broken, two silica arm will be broken, okay. And you can have anionic complex like Si3, O9, 6 minus, Si4, O12, 8 minus this type of anionic complex. Now, if I further increase the basic oxide, that is the 3 moles of basic oxide with the 2 moles of SiO2 or the oxygen atom to silicon ratio is 7 is to 2, that is 3.5. So, then in that case, 3 broken links. If you break the 3 links, then it becomes Si2, O7, 6 minus. This is you can find. So, Si2, it is not there anyway. Uh, Si3, O96 minus is here. This is Si2 O76 minus. You can have three broken links, three broken links per tetrahedron. Okay, so then it makes a chain basically. This is a chain. Okay, when the three links are broken, and when you make 4 is to 1, then all links are broken, because in that case you can get the discrete SiO4 4 minus like this SiO4 4 minus. So SiO4 4 minus is a very think is that that is the when SiO2 you have say you have SiO2 SiO2 plus you have 2 MO. So, what it will give you that is Si all links will be broken this 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 all are broken links all are separated plus twice M2 plus this will be there and two oxygen will go and all link will be broken that you can find this is the this is the thing and this is basically the thing. And in this case when 
three links are broken it will change structure that is three links SI206 it will look like this SI three links are broken okay then SI is there and then all these links are broken right this So, you can find here it is basically SI2 O7 6 minus. So, this is you can see 1, 2, 3 oxygen all links are broken 1, 2, 3. So, 3, 3, 6 and then the SI2 2 SI is there and oxygen is 7. You can see this is shared only this is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 6 and 1 oxygen 7. So, this is a chain structure it forms a change this is SI206 this is SI207. So, basically so as you increase the basic oxide what is happening your oxygen to silicon atom ratio is also increases as a result number of bonds that will be broken that is also increases and finally what we get that is called the uh, when SiO2 react with the two moles of basic oxide you get orthosilicate composition is also called and you get a very simplest the silicon anionic complex SiO44 minus that is the simplest you cannot further break this uh, that is the silicon anions right. So, silicon so silicon do not uh, it remains there is a simplest you, if I say simplest anionic complex into the melt will be SiO4 uh, 4 minus that is the simplest anionic complex that is possible into the slab. And that happens when when the basic oxide to the silica ratio is 2 or you can say oxygen atom to silicon ratio is 4 is to 1 right ok. Now, uh, so that is the structure I talked about now I will talk about the basicity. Now, how do you define the basicity of a slag uh, that is the slag melt. Basicity basically in according to ionic theory it is defined in terms of the free oxygen ion activity the how much oxygen ion is there into the melt that is free that is after combining with all the acidic oxide available into the melt ok. So, after that complete for example, complete depolymerization for example, if I have x mole of SiO2 right and uh, then how much of that is that is that is 2 x mole of MO will be required. RO, RO is the R is the basically MO I am talking about here is I am written as RO, R basically the cations ok. So, if you have x mole of SiO2 you require 2 mole of RO or MO to neutralize it completely, neutralize means basically to depolymerize it completely right. So, that will be required and similarly if you have Y moles of P2O5 you basically require 3 moles of RO for complete depolymerization of the P2O5 structure right. So, from this equation what you get you will get x moles of SiO4 4 minus 2 y moles of PO4 3 minus and then you will have this will be the remaining oxygen Z was the total moles of RO initially present and out of which 2 x will be consumed by the SiO2 x mole of SiO2 and 3 y will be consumed by the y mole of P2O5 right. So, then what about the oxygen and left will be this much z minus 2 x minus 3 y of O2 minus and z R2 plus will be there and this cation basically will neutralize this structure SiO4 4 minus PO4 3 minus right and this will be the that is the oxygen and activity and oxygen and activity free oxygen and activity into the melt represents its basicity that is the how much the slag is basic the more the oxygen and activity more is is this capacity to neutralize the acidic oxide and hold them into the slag structure. So, it is somehow also given uh, idea of the holding capacity of the slag for the impurity oxides right. So, more the oxygen and activity in the in the, in the, in the slag that is the more is basicity and more is holding capacity for the obviously if it is more then you have you you can neutralize the further is uh, acidic oxide into there or not there. But anyway whatever it may be that is when the oxygen and activity is high that is basicity is high it indicates basicity high and certain amount of 
oxygen activity that is viscosity is required uh, to hold the all the acidic impurity oxide into it. So, now viscosity also uh, definition was proposed by the molecular theory. Molecular theory that means it does not consider there is a molecular theory is considered the molecule exist freely into the still melt and by ionic theory it says that is the it is melt only in the ionic anions and cations forms ok and ionic form it exists and molecular theory in the molecular form it exists. So, that is the way initially the basicity was defined all the basic summation of basic oxide by acidic oxide it is called the common basicity, but it is not a very proper definition of basicity because all the basic oxide are not uh, are not equally uh, efficient ok to retain the impurity acidic impurity oxide in the steel melt or uh, the oxygen ion activity will not be similar for all the cases for all the basic oxide cases ok. So, all the basic oxide are not equally efficient to retain the acidic oxide into the slag. So, the, the acidic oxide summation of acidic oxide summation of basic oxide by acidic oxide is the common basicity and V ratio is defined as percentage of CO by percentage of SiO2 and uh, this is very much uh, used into the industry V ratio. The basicity is the CO by SiO2 because CO is the most effective basic oxide and among the all other basic oxide, but MgO comes next, but CO is the most effective uh, basic oxide. And then and among the acidic oxide also in the steel mill specially is the SiO2 is the major one. So, it is around 50 percent is there in the 40 to 50 percent. So, that is why CO2 SiO2 ratio is designated as the basicity of the slag ok. And some other definition is that excess base, excess base and here basically total basic oxide minus twice of SiO2 minus 3 of PtO5 right. So, 2 moles of SiO2 and PtO5 we have to minus because that much of basic oxide has already been used by the slag, then the rest of the basic oxide that is freely present into the slag. So, that represent how much is the excess base is there into the slag and that represent is uh, the basic power of the slag ok. So, that is the way you can do it. So, this is one way and this is second and third way and here you represent this the R and M are basically the same ok. So, so this is the way also molecular theory this is a very well known today in industry you can know there is the basicity they represent only the V ratio and excess base is a very important definition because in several cases it has been found there is for example, the phosphate capacity correlate very good with the excess base there is a, some other definition of basicity more way ok. So, this is the way it can be done. And, uh, so, this is the ionic theory it says that is the free oxygen and activity of the slag is the measure of basicity of the slag ok. And basicity is important because basicity defines that is the defines the holding capacity of the acidic impurity oxide into the slag. So, basicity is very important from that point of view. Now, oxidizing power of the slag this is the very after the basicity this is the holding capacity of the slag to contain the impurity oxide into the slag. Another important property of the slag is the oxidizing power. How do you determine the oxidizing power of the slag? And chemical potential of oxygen of the slag that is the you can simply define the chemical potential of oxygen in the slag is RTLN of PO2, where PO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen that is exist with the slag equilibrium partial pressure of oxygen and this is the definition there is the mu O2 slag you can define simply like this. Now, question is there is how do you know what is the partial pressure of oxygen that coexist equilibrium partial pressure of oxygen that coexist with the slag composition. And it has been found that if you has the highest partial pressure of oxygen among all the basic oxide present if you have a look in the Ellingham diagram you can find the iron oxide is the much above compared to the other oxide like calcium oxide is much below in the Ellingham diagram. Then SiO2 is also much below PtO5 very close to ox iron oxide that is there in the pure form. Most of the oxide that is uh, all the constituents of the slag ok all the constituents of the slag are below the iron oxide line in the Ellingham diagram. It represent that is the iron oxide has the maximum partial pressure of oxygen in equilibrium with it 
among considered. So, the partial pressure of oxygen that will be in equilibrium with the pure iron oxide that will eventually be in equilibrium with the rest of the oxide because that is the higher ox uh, that is the uh, <coughs> partial pressure of oxygen is high that will be sufficient to remain other oxide this is more than that. So, as a result this pure 2 slag you can simply represent by uh, there is a partial pressure of oxygen the equilibrium partial pressure of oxygen that will be remain with the slag that is equal to partial pressure of oxygen that will be in equilibrium with the FU in the slag. Not pure FU, but FU in the slag activity may be reduced. Okay. So, that is possible and it is measured by the activity of FU in the slag that is the thing. And activity of FU in the slag how do you measure that is basically the partial pressure of oxygen okay, that remains in equilibrium with the FU in slag divided by partial pressure of oxygen that will remain with the FU pure FU okay. that is the usual definition that is the P by P naught that is the activity definition that is partial pressure of oxygen that will remain with the FU in slag divided by partial pressure of oxygen that will remain in equilibrium with the pure FU okay, that is the activity. So, you can write the mu O2 slag is equal to RTL in PO2 of activity of FU into PO2 that is the activity of uh, that is the there is the partial pressure of oxygen that will remain in equilibrium with the FU pure. So, this is a constant value this is a constant value. So, mu O2 basically can be if I know the activity of FU in the slag I can calculate what is the chemical potential of oxygen in the slag right this is possible. So, activity of FU in the slag to, to calculate that that is pseudo Turner diagram is there that is the SiO2 PTO5 CO MnO MgO and the FU and these are the major constituents of the SiO2 FU and the CO, but obviously in the slag you have MnO MgO as well as PTO5. So, the pseudo Turner diagram is defined like this way one kernel is SiO2 PTO5 other kernel is CO MnO MgO and other is FU. And then these are the lines you can see these are the isoactivity line of the FU. So, for different slag people have measured what is the activity of FU. So, and then this is the isoactivity line you can find here and you can find that this line is cross bond this is the composition this dotted line refers to the composition of the dicalcium silicate that is SiO2 twice CO twice CO SiO2 and that is the ortho silicate composition at this composition that is the SiO2 is totally neutralized by the calcium oxide as I said and the ionic complex is SiO4 4 minus. So, at this composition what you can find that is the CO and SiO2 are combined they form a dicalcium silicate very strong compound. So, then if you in the slag will remain relatively free. So, its activity will be little higher. So, you can find at this composition the activity of FU is maximum all this if you see along this line it is the activity. Anyway, so this is the Turner diagram it is available. So, this from this Turner diagram people can say for a particular composition of the steel slag what will be its activity and if you know the activity you can simply calculate what will be the chemical potential of slag chemical oxygen potential of the slag ok. So, this thing this is and then activity uh, there is the activity is maximum for the oxalicylic that is the thing ok. Now, come to the viscosity. Now, why the viscosity is important? Viscosity is another very important property of the slag because uh, lower the viscosity because what is this basically the defining take place by the slag metal reaction a slag metal reaction take place at the interface. Now, the product or the pieces has to diffuse through the concentration boundary layer both into the metal phase as well as into the slag phase. So, when the movement into the slag phase when the product is moving in the slag phase then the slag viscosity is very important yeah. If the viscosity is less then the movement of this product or the pieces into the slag will be much faster. So, slag viscosity slag should be as fluid as possible for effective mass transfer of the product that is generated at the slag metal interface for transferring towards the center or the bulk of the slag. So, low viscosity favors the slag metal reaction that is why you will find most of the cases the slag is made viscous because uh, may make fluid by addition of calcium fluoride or magnesium oxide they are sometimes added 
to make the slag fluid. If the slag is not fluid enough, your mass transfer will not be there and then impurity transfer will be next to impossible. So, viscosity from that point of view plays a great role, kinetic point of view. And viscosity obviously depends on the slag liquidus. So, if the liquidus is less, it will remain fluid at still making temperature, it will remain very slow. If the liquidus is very high, obviously it will remain viscous and then mass transfer will be affected. And in the still making, the slag viscosity is very important, the mass transfer to the slag is very important because it is impurity removal is by only the slag metal reaction except the carbon monoxide that escape to the atmosphere. And all the impurity oxide like silica, P2O5, everything goes into the slag and is retained there. So, unless you make the slag fluid and unless you take this impurity into the slag more effectively, it is very difficult to retain them into the slag also. And also that is why there is a viscosity depends on the slag liquidus. So, slag composition. So, liquidus is less which in turn depends on the slag composition. So, composition also slag composition also you have to make in such a way such that the liquidus goes down. You can see this is the Turner diagram SiO2 and this end is the CO and this is in the FeO and you can find there is a wide liquid zone. So, there is a wide liquid zone, this is the liquid zone and you can find that is the two phase region, three phase regions come when you have lot of acidic oxide, SiO2 is more, then also you get lot of uh, silicates, okay, solid silicates you will have. And if you have lot of lime also, you have lot of lime, then you will form dicalcium silicate, the, 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 the dicalcium ferrite, and uh, huh, there is a tricalcium silicate, dicalcium silicate, all these things are here, you can find here. So, if lime is more also, then also you will have lot of solid into the system, so viscosity will be higher. So, high limey, limey slag also viscous and the silica slag, high silica slag is also viscous this region and liquid remains this region, any composition in this region is liquid. And that way it is good from, from the point of view of blast furnace slag, blast furnace slag we found only a very narrow pockets or very narrow window of composition where we can operate the blast furnace. That is why the basicity was only of the order of 1. But here we can increase the basicity to a great extent because there is a wide range of area where I can adjust the basicity. And uh, we require the basicity here to be higher basically more than in steel making that is as I said there is a basicity higher the basicity you can retain the P2O5, you can even retain the silica and all these things. So, basicity is maintained around 2 to 4, there is a V ratio, V ratio is maintained 2 to 4 and still the slag remain quite fluid because of very wide liquid region of the slag. This is very important compared to the blast funding operating window and this is the slag, still making slag operating window. Still making slag operating window is much wider compared to the blast furnace operating window composition. As a result here in still making case we can uh, we can use a very high viscosity that is the advantage here 2 to 4 V ratio. And as I said both highly uh, basic and the acidic slags are viscous even at 1600 degree centigrade. Okay. So, only but this region is not liquid region is quite big at 1600 degree centigrade this this diagram is at 1600, 1600 degree centigrade and you can find the liquid region is quite big. So, we can have basicity of the range of 2 to 4 in the steel making practice. Okay. So, these are the reference E.T. Targdogan fundamental of steel making and then Ghosh Chatterjee and H.S. Ray that uh, this introduction to males molten slag is a very good book and you can uh, see the silicate structure and depolymerization everything and the ring structure that forms with limey slack, all these things are given in the HST book. Now, so in conclusion we can say there is the pure liquid silica is very viscous due to long chain network of tetradal silica structure and basic oxide when you add it depolymerizes the silica structure and make it viscous, uh, make it uh, fluid and reduces its melting temperature. Okay. This is the very important thing and we have seen that is if you just go on increasing the basic oxide to the silica structure, then the depolymerization increases and finally, when the SiO2 to basic oxide ratio is 1 is to 2, at that point 
you can has the simplest anionic complex that is SiO4 4 minus. Okay. Otherwise, if the basic oxide is less, then different anionic complex take place, more, more complex anionic complex are there and the simplest one occurs when the uh, MO is 2 SiO2 is 2. Okay. And then excess oxygen ion activity in the slag defines the viscosity of the slag. This is very important. That is the in case of the ionic theory, we defined it by uh, excess oxygen ion activity in the slag defines the viscosity or in case of molecular theory using the molecular theory, there are different different definition of viscosity. One is total summation of basic oxide to acidic oxide it is called the common basicity and percentage of CO by SiO2 that is called the V ratio and that is a very important ratio because CO and SiO2 are the major constituents of the steel making slag and more powerful constituents also both with respect to the basic oxide CO is the more powerful and SiO2 is more powerful for the acidic oxide. So, their ratio is used as V ratio and it is a very popularly known basicity that is the way the basicity is defined into the industry. And also you can have excess base and where MO minus twice SiO2 minus twice of moles of P2O5 and that basically gives you that is the excess base and those base which are more powerful in retaining the liquid that is the acidic oxide into the slag. So, so this is the way different way the uh, that is your basicity is defined and the FU activity in the slag defines the oxidizing power of the slag. So, if you is more um, what I will say that is the active as an oxidizing agent rather than a basic agent. Okay. If you as a is a more powerful uh, basically it is an oxidizing agent of the slag and CO is the uh, CO basically contributes for the basicity of the slag for retaining the uh, there is the acidic impurity into the slag um, that is uh, defined by the amount of the lime into the slag. And the if in the slag basically gives the oxidizing power of the slag. Okay, thank you very much.